Good evening, everyone. I am a <clears throat> straight up six o'clock time to start. Thank you very much for coming this evening, for attending this uh, event. My name is Harry Otto. I uh, serve as a deputy to the State Auditor Tom Schweich. And with me here at the table are Pam Tillery, who is, uh, Pam is a audit manager out of our Springfield office, and David Olson, who is the auditor in charge on this engagement, and in the back of the room are photo guy is my driver he got me down here this evening this afternoon, Jeff Earl. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little bit about the, the meeting structure and how we we'll, we'll plan to handle this. Uh, I'll offer the uh, remarks and give some background about the engagement. Uh, we'll go through the findings and we'll go through the recommendations that we made as a result of the audit. We will have time for questions. Maybe we'll ask you to hold those questions until we go through the audit the first time. The questions ought to be of something of broad interest, not so much about a specific event or a detail or a payment or a receipt, because we can't get into the, the nitty gritty of all the little details that might have occurred. This audit is uh, in the findings. Uh, they're intended to be constructive and provide guidance uh, to improve city governance. This is what we call a petition audit. We're here because we were told to show up basically by enough citizens down here. It took uh, 124 signatures uh, on petition to get us to be here. But once, once those, those signatures are gathered, the state auditor is required to do the petition audit. It's not an option. He has, he has to come or send his crew out here to do the audit. So 124 signatures were needed, 137 were uh, received and uh, that was back in August of last year. The uh, number of uh, signatures needed are based upon the number of uh, voter, uh, uh, registered voters for the prior gubernatorial um, election. I do want to make one other um, introduction. I, I forgot to introduce your state senator who's sitting at the back of the room almost. Ed Emory, it's good to see you. Senator Emory here. <clears throat> it's always good to see the local uh, senators or reps show up whenever we do petition audit deliveries. Uh, we began the field work in December of last year. We considered all the concerns that the, what were raised by the chief petitioner and others, and ultimately the scope of our audit is it's at the discretion of the auditor's office, but by starting with the uh, concerns of the petitioner, that's where we go. Many of the concerns had no findings. You're going to learn about the concerns that we did have findings on. Uh, but when we do have findings, that may lead us to change our scope or direction as we do the audit. The period audited was the year of December 31st, 2012. The report would note any pertinent issues arising, arising after that date. And uh, generally, issues that were completed before this time period are generally outside the scope of the audit. Over 535 hours were, uh, were put into this work. When we, <clears throat> when we uh, give a range of fees of what this audit would cost the city, uh, we tell them up front, we, but it's sort of a guess because we don't know what we're going to get into. And we, saw, we set a range of 15 15 to 35,000, and it's going to be somewhere in the $30,000 area because we did find a lot of things to talk about. We want to make a note that the city officials and employees were very cooperative during the audit, and the Board of Aldermen very agreeable to our recommendations, which is always a good sign. And then we hope the focus will be on improving city operations and offering uh, offerings for the future not laying blame and worrying about the past. There's a citizen summary included with the audit report, I think it's at the beginning. And that, <clears throat> that's, a real, that's a real sharp capsulized uh, synopsis of what we found. And also there is a rating system which Auditor Schweik has introduced to the office. And I have to tell you that the rating on this engagement or how we rated the city is poor. And that's as bad as it gets. Poor, fair, good, excellent. Those were the choices, but in this case, <coughs> poor is the rating. <clears throat> the 
The audit report contains findings grouped under seven categories with a total, total of uh, 24 recommendations with, within those seven categories. And we'll, we'll, we'll walk through those. Uh, I'll walk through the findings, the recommendations. They'll, you might have to, if you want to stay with me, you might have to do a little flipping back and forth because I'll give you the, recommendation, the finding, the recommendation, and the response of the city rather than uh, finding, 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 recommendation, recommendation, response, response, response. Okay, so we're going to start with finding one. The accounting controls, procedures, and records. The city's accounting controls and procedures need improvement. The city has had significant turnover in the city court position. We talked about the segregation of duties. The city does not segregate accounting functions, and the board does not provide independent or supervisory reviews. The city clerk receives records uh, and deposits monies, reconcile bank accounts, prepares invoices, issues checks, posts entries into the accounting system, performs utility billing procedures and payroll related duties. Many of these duties would normally be performed by a city treasurer and a city collector, but the city does not have anyone in those positions. So our recommendation under that area was to consider appointing separate people to city clerk, city collector, city treasurer to adequately segregate duties. If this is not possible, the Board of Aldermen should perform and document reviews of the city clerk's work. And the response from the city was the Board and Mayor will provide closer oversight of city clerk's work. Under 1.2, the city used pre-numbered but unofficial receipt slips for non-utility monies received. The city issues unnumbered receipt slips for, uh, for some utility payments. Receipt slips do not always indicate the method of payment. And the city does not issue receipt slips for some part monies. Monies are not always recorded or deposited. I should say timely. Monies are not always timely reported or deposited. So our recommendation under 1.2 is that the issue official pre-numbered receipt slips, properly account for a numerical sequence of the receipt slips, document the composition of receipts, and reconcile them to the composition of deposits, and ensure the receipts are timely posted and deposited. The city responded, the city will implement this recommendation. <coughs> Under 1.3 accounting records, the city did not accurately record some disbursements. Gives me a chance to take a sip. Under accounting records, the city did not accurately record some disbursements. A $10,875 check was recorded as $108.75. A $2,025 check was recorded as $624. The same check number was recorded twice, once for 91 and once for 2507, 2507 that is. Some disbursements were posted to the wrong fund. The city posted a $38,671 electricity fund disbursement to the water and sewer fund. Some disbursements were not posted to the accounting system and some were posted twice. <clears throat> At least 45 accounts payable checks totaling over $45,000 were not posted to the accounting system and a check 23908 was posted twice. Uh, the December 31st, 2012 bank reconciliation revealed numerous and significant problems. Our review found a difference of $151,330 between the adjusted bank balance and the book balance. The audit staff uh, also found differences between the reconciled bank balance and the book balance in the accounting records of the park fund and the cemetery fund. Our, our recommendation here under 1.3 is to uh, ensure accounting records are accurately maintained. We found a lack of accurately maintained accounting records. 
the response is the city believes it now has the accounting records under control. 1.4 dealt with check signers. Uh, the board does not have adequate controls over bank accounts and disbursements. Dual signatures are required on all city checks, but 118 out of uh, 250 checks were, which were issued between January 1st and May 14th of 2012 were, were signed by the city clerk and city superintendent not by a board member. The first signature should be that of the preparer. The second signature should be that of a board member to show review and approval. We, can, we recommend that uh, every check require at least one member of the board to sign the check. And the uh, response from the city was the city now has two aldermen, the mayor and the city clerk on the checking account and two signatures are required on all checks. Overall, our finding here in the first area really could be capsulized like this. Due to the lack of oversight, internal controls, and poor records, we have no assurance that the city monies were properly handled because of the lack of records. We move on to finding two, utility system controls and procedures. Uh, they need improvement, the service operations need improvement. <clears throat> Under utility rates, the city has not performed a formal review of water, sewer, gas, electric, and trash rates. So there's less assurance that the utility rates are set at appropriate levels. For the year ended in uh, December of 11, the water and sewer fund inc incurred an operating loss of uh, $29,724. The electric fund had an operating net income of $125,847. The gas fund had an operating net income of $52,525. Utility fees should cover the cost of providing the related services. They shouldn't generate a loss. They shouldn't generate a tremendous profit. They should, they should cover the cost of providing the related services is what they should do. So our recommendation under 2.1 was to perform and document a re review of water, sewer, gas, electric, and trash rates to ensure the rates are appropriate. The response was the city will implement that recommendation. Under 2.2, 2.2, water reconciliation, the city had not reconciled gallons of water pump to gallons of water <coughs> bill until we brought it to their attention. The city then performed a reconciliation for January 10th through February 10th of 2013 and found 755,431 more gallons had been pumped than had been built. City water usage is not tracked, making a proper reconciliation difficult. <coughs> Significant differences indicate either water loss and or possible, possible unbilled usage and the need for the follow-up. When you have that much of a spread between the water pump and the water bill, uh, there's either a water leak, leaks, leaks and leaks, or there's been some unbilled uh, uses of the water, or both. Our recommendation under 2.2 was to properly meter all water, reconcile gallons pump to gallons bill, and investigate discrepancies. The auditee's response, the city is implementing that recommendation. Under 2.3 adjustments, the city clerk posts adjustments to the utility computer system without always obtaining independent approval or adequate supporting documentation. This uh, creates a significant control issue. It creates opportunity for abuse when there's no independent approval or adequate supporting documentation. So our recommendation under 2.3 would require someone independent of the utility system to review and approve all adjustments and maintain supporting documentation. That was our recommendation. The response is the city is implementing. Under 2.4, the utility deposits. The city does not prepare a monthly list of utility deposits uh, and at fails to reconcile it to the deposit payable balance. At our request, the city prepared a list of utility deposits on hand, which was $3,291 less than the deposits payable in the general ledger. Our recommendation there is 
to prepare this list of utility deposit, reconcile it monthly, put the deposit's payable balance, investigate and resolve any discrepancies. The city's response was the city is implementing that recommendation. Under finding two, what we want to stress there is really the need for a formal review of utility rates and this monthly water reconciliation, two very important things. <coughs> we move to uh, finding three, which covers disbursements. <coughs> Controls and procedures over city disbursements need improvement. Under the procurement procedures, the city does not have a formal bidding policy, did not solicit bid for bids for numerous services and purchases during the fiscal year 2012. And uh, among those purchases where there was no formal bidding policy and uh, bids were not selected for the tree trimming, with an annual cost of over 52,000, natural gas, uh, 44,000, gas system maintenance, uh, over 42,000, the utility system construction and repair, almost 21,000, transformers, nearly 10,000, the uh, fuel, nearly 10,000, utility system repairs and maintenance, approximately 7,000. Our recommendation there is that the must establish formal bidding policies and procedures and the response was the city will establish formal bidding policies and procedures. In the 3.2 allocation of expenses, the city does not maintain documentation to support the alloca allocation of expenses among various funds. They allocated uh, one-fourth Expenses to a general fund, one fourth expenses to the electric, and one half to water and sewer, but none to the cemetery fund or gas fund. And it's proper to allocate expenses where they belong. It does take some documentation, it takes some record keeping to, to do that accurately. So we suggest, or we note that allocated payroll spec expenses for employees performing multiple functions among various funds. There's no documented basis to determine where those folks have been working. Our recommendation is to properly allocate those city expenses to the applicable funds and ensure the allocations are supported by adequate documentation. The response from the city was the city will implement. 3.3, supporting documentation. The city did not maintain invoices for transformers. That was about 10,000 credit card purchases, 2,600 utility system repairs and maintenance, over 2,000. Our recommendation, maintain adequate supporting documentation for all disbursements. This response was the same. This issue is now under control. Under 3.4, disbursement review. The city needs to improve procedures to review invoices and document receipt of goods and services. We identified a duplicate payment of $1,055 for police equipment. Uh, the city has since received uh, a refund for that double payment. Many invoices paid by the city did not contain an acknowledgement of a receipt of goods and always should. Our recommendation is there under 3.4, adequately review all invoices, ensure all invoices are initial or signed to indicate acceptance. The city responded, the city believes this issue is under control. Under 3.5, fuel use and purchases, the city does not reconcile fuel purchases recorded in police department mileage and fuel use logs to fuel buildings. The city has no records to ensure fuel purchases for other city equipment and vehicles are used appropriately. Our recommendation, maintain fuel use logs for all city-owned vehicles and equipment, review those logs for accuracy, reconcile the fuel purchases, and invest investigate any <coughs> significant differences. The, the city responded to the city will implement this recommendation. Under 3.6, we talk about conflicts of interest and employment classification. Mayor Garrett signed 13 timesheets approving contract payments to his wife 
signed 11 of the associated checks totaling $5,668 while serving as mayor. Mayor Garrett's wife served as city clerk, also worked for the city assisting other city clerks at times during July 12 through April 13. The city has no documentation to support classifying Mayor Garrett's wife as an independent contractor rather than an employee. Other city clerks were classified as employees. The city reported those payments to Mayor Garrett's wife to the IRS on Farm 1099 MISC. It did not withhold income or payroll taxes. Our recommendation under 3.6 is closely examine city transactions to identify and avoid apparent and actual conflicts of interest properly classify all persons hired as employees or contract employees and ensure all compensation is subject to applicable income and payroll taxes and reported properly. The city's responsible as the city will implement this finding or this recommendation. Under three, what we really want to stress here is the city lacks guidelines for bidding. There's a lack of supporting documentation for various disbursements, a lack of review by the board, and a conflict of interest issue. Finding four talks about payroll controls. They need improvement. Payroll disbursements uh, procedures need improvement. With respect to final paychecks under 4.1, the city did not retain documentation to support the final amounts paid to a former city clerk and overpaid the former city superintendent for a vacation and sick leave. A former city clerk received one final paycheck for accrued sick leave totaling 30 days or $4,020 and another for accrued vacation leave totaling 15 days or $22,010, but the city had no supporting records for that uh, calculation. The city superintendent received one final paycheck for accrued sick leave totaling 35 days or $6,521 and another for accrued vacation leave totaling 15 days or $2,795, both of which were included in excess of the policy minimums. Per the city policy, any sick days over 30 are forfeited. Employees accrue 15 days of vacation leave annually, but they cannot accumulate from one year to the next. So during the relevant time period, this, the uh, former city superintendent used 2.375 days of sick leave and five vacation leave days, so it should have only been paid for 27.625 days, sick days, and 10 days of vacation, so there's a total payment of $2,306. Our recommendation, ensure that final paychecks are supported by proper documentation and in compliance with city policies and seek reimbursement for overpayments. The audit team's response, the city's response here is the city is implementing and will consider seeking reimbursement of overpayments. Under 4.2 additional compensation, the city paid the former city clerk and former city superintendent $220 and $210 respectively from the park and cemetery funds but did not retain any timesheets or other documentation to support these payments, and these payments were not included on the employees of the two farms are, and were not subjected to uh, payroll tax withholdings. Three of the checks were signed by the former city clerk and former city superintendent and not by the board member. Our recommendation under 4.2 is to ensure additional time work, time work is properly reported and compensated and amended 2012 W-2 forms to be filed. Response from the city, the city will no longer give additional compensation for duties during normal operating hours. We'll contact the IRS reporting regarding amended W-2 forms. Under 4.3 payroll taxes, the city was assessed a $718 in penalties and interest for failing to timely remit payroll taxes to the IRS and Missouri Department of Revenue. Our recommendation, time to remit payroll taxes to the appropriate taxing authority and the city responded that we will implement that recommendation. So under 
under four to summarize four one and four two, a lack of documentation led us to question the payments to the former city clerk and the city former city superintendent. Finding five deals with budgetary procedures and financial reporting. The city does not comply with state law relating to budget preparation, monitoring, and amendments and publishing of financial statements. The annual budgets do not contain all the elements required by state law. They are not approved timely. Budgets for the years ended 1231-12 and 1231-2011 did not include a budget message did not include actual and budget amounts for the two preceding years and uh, did not include the beginning and ending actual and estimated balances. As of March 9, 2013, the 2013 budget had not been prepared or approved by the board and the 2012 budget was not approved until June of 2012. Sections 67.010 and 67.080 revised statutes in Missouri establish requirements for the format of the annual budget provide no exception that the public money shall be made unless it is authorized in the budget. Our recommendation is to prepare budgets timely and in compliance with state law. The city said they will implement that recommendation. Under 5-2 budget amendments, the city did not approve a 2011 budget amendment until February of 2012, well after the fiscal year ended, and it overspent the water and sewer fund, electric fund, gas fund, and cemetery fund budgets. Our recommendation is to prepare and approve budget amendments prior to incurring the related disbursements. The city responded they will implement that recommendation. 5.3 under financial statements. The city did not publish financial statements in 2012 and 2011 as required by section 79.160 RSMO. We recommend that they publish the statements in accordance with state law. The city will implement as their response. Under five, under our Area finding five, what one stress is the main points here are that the board and citizens are not adequately informed of the financial condition of the city. Budgets are not done timely. Yearly financial statements are not reported in the local paper. Finding six deals with the agendas, meetings, and ordinances. The city has not always complied with the Sunshine Law and needs to improve its ordinances. Under agendas, the city cannot demonstrate compliance with state law as the board did not retain notification or tentative agendas for some meetings. We recommend that the, the city provide proper notice of meetings, ensure appropriate agendas are posted and retained. The city uh, responded to board meetings. This is under control at this time. Under 6.2 meetings, <clears throat> we noted that some issues disclosed in uh, I'm sorry, some issues discussed in closed meetings were not allowable by the Sunshine Law, such as trash service bids. You can't close a meeting to talk about trash service bids. Open meetings uh, do not record a roll call vote to enter the closed session as required by law. So when the, when the group goes into closed session, they have to have a vote to go to closed session and have to record the vote, and then always done that. A recommendation under 6.2, limit closed session discussions to those specifically allowed by law and record roll call votes to enter closed session in open meeting minutes. The response was the city, but the board believes this is under control at this time. Our finding six uh, really could be uh, summarized as comply with the Sunshine Law. I did have one more to touch on uh, 6.3 ordinances. The city has not adopted ordinances to establish the compensation of city officials or employees. The city has not adopted ordinances to establish utility rates. <clears throat> and the city has not adopted ordinances for utility service shutoffs. The current practice is to shut off four days after the 25th of the month if partial payment has not been received. Uh, we recommend that all these ordinances uh, be completed make them complete the city's response was we will the city will implement finally finding seven deals with capital assets the city does not maintain records for its capital assets uh, doesn't tag the assets for specific identification or conduct a uh, physical inventory where they actually go out and uh, examine or view the inventory of, of assets 
our recommendation is uh, to maintain adequate property records, properly tag, number, or otherwise identify all these applicable city properties and assets and conduct and, doc and document an annual inventory. Without the, these asset records, it was impossible to determine the theft or misuse had occurred. The city's response to our, uh, our recommendation, our finding, was the city is implementing that recommendation. So, that wasn't too bad, about a half hour um, to get through our, our findings, our recommendation, our responses, and now we're ready for questions. So, um, I'd be happy to, with the help of Pam David, uh, give you the proper answer. So, please don't hesitate to. And if you think of a question later, I'll leave some cards here. They could leave some cards here as well. We you know, will welcome questions um, after the fact, after the meeting, in case you don't want to ask it here or if you think about them later. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, they want to hear the question, what is our involvement to whether or not the recommendations are going to be implemented. One of the things Tom Schweig did when he came in as auditor is, uh, is form what he called a follow-up um, procedure. So whenever we go out and give a poor rating, we do a follow-up. And uh, it's usually 90 to 120 days after the delivery that we go back to the, to the auditee and say, okay, you said you were going to do A, B, and C, and let's just see how you've done it. We issue a follow-up report, so uh, stay tuned, and we will see uh, how quickly the recommendations are implemented. Um, you know, in a petition on it, we may never be back here again. Uh, we may be back here. Uh, if you come back under a petition, it be three years, you can't tell us to come back any quicker than that state law doesn't provide it, but we will do the follow-up report, that's a good question, and we will report on whether or not the recommendations and the, the um, position of the city has, you know, they followed up where they said they would follow up. Good question. Did I see the senator have a question? Mr. Otto, just, uh, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a citizen of the political but I represented, uh, Ed Emory, represented the main years in the House and I represented in the Senate. And that I mean, I, I think the question, this is kind of a follow-up to the question that was just asked, is that what, what are the uh, options or responsibilities available to the citizens of the, uh, themselves? Obviously, it's good that, that uh, Arthur Schmeich will be back, but what are the responsibilities of the citizens locally that follow up with us? Well, I think it's a responsibility of citizens to hold their elected officials feet to the fire on these, uh, if they've said they're gonna change and, and follow those recommendations. I often tell crowds at the auditor's office, we, uh, they get tired of me saying this at the office, we don't carry badges and we don't have guns. You know, we, we can't enforce what we found. We can only report it and we can publicize it and we can inform the citizens, this is what we found. But, and we can come back and say, what happens 90 to 120 days later, what we found on the follow-up. But we have no law enforcement authority, and we can't uh, arrest, we can't, we can't do any of those things, we can only report. So it's up to the citizens to, to come back to their elected officials and say, have you followed up or heard the follow-up report filed by the auditor's office? You still haven't uh, implemented recommendations. So it's really just not. continuing to be involved. That's correct, look, yeah. I mean, you should look, citizens, you should look for this uh, budget now. Uh, they, the city said it's going to publish its budget. It's going to publish its financial statement. You should be looking for that uh, to see whether or not that happens. And without that, you really can't tell um, whether or not uh, information is coming your way. I think you should look hard for these uh, utility studies to see whether or not the rates are properly set. Like we said earlier, um, they have to they have to raise enough money to provide a service, but they shouldn't raise excess money. And one fund shouldn't support another fund. The trash fund, all that, and 
be able to handle it. It's all in the water, the gas, um, whatever. But uh, and, and they're all separate enterprise funds of some sort. Other questions? Yes, sir. You may know that there's some kind of law violations and things like that. No, are you going to get by the attorney general office? So I know this is kind of out, outside the ground. But with those things, I've been just to go to the part of the office, you know, um, these things be in the realm of uh, causing a, uh, a chance for the city to come under suit because of these actions that you guys have that's a that's a good legal question and you're talking to a cpa so i'll qualify my answer there but uh, you know elected officials can have some personal liability fines uh, imposed upon them for uh, on purpose violating sunshine and sometimes you get to you know you get a, a free get out of jail but that's not a good term uh, but you but what, once it's been explained to you this is how these meetings have to be handled and if you, if, you know, they want to leave, they on purpose continue to break the rules, they can be subject to fines for violating sunshine. And I think it would take a citizen to pursue that. Yes, ma'am. If you found during the audit, if you found the wrongdoing, deliberate wrongdoing, do you turn it over to the state attorney general's office or do you just simply report it to us? When we find, and the question is good, when uh, if we find what we think is a violation or a theft or embezzlement. We generally work with the law enforcement authorities in the area, often with the highway patrol. Uh, they, they have forensic accountants that we work with. The, the situation here was such that the records were in such disarray, it could not be determined. Not to say that it did, not to say that it didn't happen, but the records and documentation was, was bad. But if we would have found evidence of theft, we would have worked with law enforcement to pursue that. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Outside, an outside audit of a yeah. CPA firm, right. financial statement yes. on it, yes. and they couldn't certify the right. financial statement. That makes sense. They, they couldn't find the documentation either. So everything they said was sort of qualified because the records weren't there. Uh, many of the recommendations were to obtain documentation, to see the documentation occurs in the future, and that's one of the follow-ups that, that we'll be looking at. And that's one of the things that the city has said they will do. Any other questions? Thank you again for attending. It's, uh, it's good attendance. Sometimes we've seen some pretty small crowds at some of these, so I'm glad to see the interest of the citizens here. Um, I hope going forward uh, our efforts or your efforts result in a positive situation for the city. Thank you very much.